Good afternoon, everybody, and thanks for joining us today. I'm Jeff Finn, CEO at Realnex, and really excited to be starting this new Realnex user forum program. Uh, we are just beginning this, and today we have a special guest, Adam von Romer, who will be joining us. And also um, joining me today is Matthew Smith, head of national business development at Realnex. Uh, many of you know Matt and some of you know might know Adam. Adam's been a highly successful broker in Florida. He's an author, a trainer, and a real next aficionado, really making a uh, specialized <laughs> use case in his uh, application of Market Edge. So Adam, really excited to hear how you've taken Market Edge and both trained with it in your, your ongoing programs, as well as used it in your day-to-day -day business to win business, execute transactions, and generally save time and make money. So this user group forum is going to be a pretty fast paced uh, ongoing campaign monthly to start with and we'll see how it goes and evolve it from there. But uh, what we want to do is have a, a brief case study uh, uh, presented by one of our power users like Adam and then get into an interactive discussion forum after uh, based on the number of people we might just uh, it won't be a, a voice discussion, but use your question or chat feature on the right of your screen, and I will help facilitate with Adam and Matt responses back and try to get everyone as uh, efficient and effective and productive as possible with Real Next, sharing best practices, some tips, uh, things that you're doing, you're doing well, some challenges that you might be having and want some feedback on, and let the community help one another to, to make the most of the platform. So, Adam, I'm going to turn the screen over to you and <laughs> it's all in your capable hands in just one second let's that let's not get more. carried away there we go let's see what you can do ready set go show my screen is ticking. all right what do you uh are you guys on my real next uh home page not yet we're there it got your rolls royce there now we've got uh you got my my mangoes okay. yet yeah, mangoes menu on a menu. Mangoes, mangoes menu. There we go. You should, you should see the uh, mangoes proposal if I got the right screen. Don't have the right screen. You don't on the... have the right screen. All right. I know where it's at now. Bear with me a second. There, How about there, that? There we go. There you go. Hey, listen. The reason the reason I'm excited to tell you guys about this, and I mean Jeff, you and I have known each other for 20 plus years since the it's NAI days. Yep. Yeah. And, and Matt and I are, are closing on a couple of years too. You know, one of the things that I noticed, and I work for a big company that shall be nameless, M&M. &M, <clears throat> and, you know, one of the things that I found in competing for business was that the little guy or the independent was really, you know, at a disadvantage when it came to doing listing presentations and, and proposals and things. And one of the parts that, that I absolutely love about Market Edge is your ability to produce very quickly and easily a a competitive listing presentation and with the click of a few buttons you can produce an om and you can produce a brochure or a flyer very quickly and if, if you're going to let me tell my story here uh, about mangoes in particular I, I think that's a really telling example of uh, you know how just how powerful it is uh, I was cold calling, and you, you and I talked about prospecting earlier, and I ran into the guy who actually owned Mango's Restaurant. Now, this guy, just so you, you know, you kind of understand where I'm coming from, at that point in time in his life, only owned 19 amphitheaters and three restaurants. Um, he told me that he was worth about a half a billion dollars legitimately net, and he lived in a 22,000 square foot house. So you kind of get the sense of who I'm dealing with here. And from the very first contact with him, he said, listen, I want you to understand I'm not going to list it. I'm not going to market it. You know, I might sell it, but, you know, I'm not listing it. I'm not marketing. I'm not doing that. I'm not doing anything. You know, just you can look at it, blah, 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 blah. And I said, well, why don't we do this, Jack? Let me, let me go over. Let me take some pictures. Let me put together a proposal, which is essentially a full-blown appraisal. And then you can make an informed business decision about whether or not to even consider selling. And he said, all right, well, it's not going to cost me anything. I said, no, no, you know, I'll, I'll do it for free. 
you know, this is my entree into the business. And this is the actual proposal that you're seeing on the screen that I did for Jack. And I know it might be a little bit hard. Uh, do you think I should make it bigger or should I just stay with one page uh, per view? Is that okay? I think that one page, you, you might want to move your screen up a little bit just to go to full screen. Let me see um, if so I can get rid of some of the uh, the goodies here. Yeah. Uh, view, where is it? Let's see. Bear with me just a second. Full screen mode, voila. There we go. There we go. So there's there's Mango's Restaurant. Mango's is pretty much a landmark here in South Florida. It's on Las Olas Boulevard. It's been there for 30 years, and it's you know it's kind of like the go-to spot for all the tourists that come down here. And um, yeah, it, like I said, it's been there in a continuous operation for 30 plus, maybe 35 years, and that was the facility. So I literally went in, took those pictures, and put together this proposal. And this is this is right out of Realnex. This is you know, put the biography in, uh, you set it once, and that's that's another thing that I'm a real proponent of is once you put this stuff in and get it set up, you never have to do it again. My marketing plan. And as all these people on the phone know, you know, that's the biggest concern that sellers have. You know, I listed my property with somebody and I never knew what they were going to do. You know, I never hear from them again. I put the marketing plan right in and right up front so they can see exactly what we're gonna do for them on an ongoing basis. And again, the beauty of Realnext and, and Market Edge is I put this in, set it up once as a template, and now it populates automatically. So it makes it you know, extraordinarily efficient to do a proposal. In fact, I'll show you one later on that I did in 20 minutes. Next up, little description of the property and nice picture of the, the building. That was probably the most time consuming part of this whole proposal. I actually had to write the description. <laughs> That's the only thing Market Edge doesn't do for you. But there's the, you know, there's the the page that I was showing the actual owner. There are some more pictures of the bar inside, outside the patio area. And then aerials. Again, front view and location map. And in Market Edge, it pinpoints this stuff for you so once you put the address in it gets you the aerials it gets you the local and regional maps i mean at that point in time it's it's pretty much you're two-thirds of the way through the proposal all you've got is you know fill in the blanks pretty much this was the financial summary model again baked right into the property when i came back to jack and said listen i think that we can sell this restaurant now understand, I'm not selling the actual restaurant itself. I'm selling the building the restaurant is in. And there's the rent, there's the monthly rent, there's the square footage, there's everything. This is the actual case. I told them that we could market it at about $6.1 million. Now remember, what's this guy been telling me the whole time? Not going to list it, not going to market it, might sell it. And I mean, I swear to you, Jack looked at me across the table and said, what do you think I should do? I said, Jack, well, based on these numbers, I clearly think it's in your best interest to, to list the property and sell it. And guess what he said? Eh, absolutely. So we literally listed this building at 6.1. I sold it for $5.6 million, cashed a $126,000 check. And again, I'm not trying to you know, say how great I are, all because of this particular, and I, I tell you, this is the only way, and guys have been trying to get him to sell the building for years. I, I swear to you, this is the only way that somebody could pry it loose. And I want you to think about this. Half of my competitors are going in with that, um, you know, like three-page opin broker's opinion of value out of RPR or PRP. I always get that confused. Or they'll walk in with an MLS spreadsheet and say, you know, here's, here's the market research. You know, to me, and this is my opinion, that's eh, a little bit on the lazy side. You know, Cause this, you know, your first proposal will probably take you a morning until you get your arms around it. But once you've got it and got it together, you can blow through one of these babies. You know, I've gotten it down in some cases to a half an hour. And the hardest part was doing that, that whole description financial metrics, your cash in and out, 
your property's operating data. I mean, it's a triple net lease investment. What's it going to do? It's going to go up in value. Your metrics per square foot, property resale data, and it's all done for you once you put the numbers in. And that's why I said I'm a big proponent of not reinventing the wheel. Loan analysis, financial indicators, and if this is the one that I love for, for the buyers, you know, that cumulative wealth analysis, what's it going to mean to them as a prospective buyer moving forward? And I actually presented that to, a, to the actual prospective buyer, the guys who bought that facility. So they looked at this, and literally all I had to do was take out my bio, take out the marketing just by simply clicking a radio button, and that was it. So it's a very quick, very efficient, and very easy process. Another one that uh, that I did, let me see if I can throw this one on the board here real quick. Is you, I did. While you're doing that, I just want to let you know, you, now, now you're in the program. You, you, the, uh, yep. That, for everyone to just recognize, Adam won that deal with sort of a prior, uh, with a prior generation of, of market edge. Oh, yeah. And output is now incredibly oh. enhanced. Oh. So system. much, so, so much better. Got all the same information, or you know, much of it, but it, the workflow is even easier. The the output's even better. But that was an output of a of a book. He happened to have won that listing with the uh, last generation. But just just so you know. Yeah. yeah well, and this the, the stuff that you guys have been doing on the back end with the design and and the um, you know the graphics, it's just so much better now than it, that than even then. And then I thought it was great. But the beauty, the real kicker here, I think, is number one. It gives the independent guy the ability, you know, to compete on a level playing field with the big nationals. Two, and I, I, hopefully I've got enough time to show you this, but it becomes a repository for your information. Let me scroll down here a little bit and show you. For example, I did a proposal on this apartment building, and I did the original proposal, and I know I'm kind of going through this a little bit fast, on this apartment building. And the real interesting part of this whole process was the comps manager, because the comps for this building just happened to be the same comps for this building. So you put them in once, and literally, you can use them to populate your next proposal. I'm now to the point in this one market area where the sales, my sales, are becoming my comps for my proposal and I'll, I'll show you i'll show you real quickly the down and dirty version this property here the fast cash in is actually a property that i took and i have it on the market for three million bucks it's a five thousand square foot building you can see that right here but the real beauty of this thing is it has a use permit in place as a marijuana dispensary and it's the only one that you can have in town. So it's got some, some real value there. But here you can see just how easy the process is. You fill in the blanks. <laughs> yeah, what's the date? What's the name of the property? What type of property? And it's, it's pretty much, in my opinion, idiot proof. I write my description. I pop it in here. I cut the description for the, the market area right from the city's website. I don't even have to rewrite it. And then literally, I go over to the, the output page. Now, this again, this is another thing that I really dig here. I set up my own template within the real next proposal uh, process. So all I did was literally take and drag out the different reports that I wanted, dropped them in here, added a header for different things like the BOV section, which I think is the bomb, and my marketing plan, pop them in there, and they auto-populate. Jeff, how am I doing on time? Can I can I open this baby up? Uh, sorry, I was muted. Just take a minute, and a okay. bunch of questions and thoughts coming in, so I want to get to... Yeah, I, I don't want to... I, I know we've got a limited amount of time, and there's just... You know, I'm, I'm trying to do the Reader's Digest condensed version, but I could spend like 15, 20 minutes on all this stuff, so... Let me see if I can get this thing to pop open real quick because it's, you know, it's a pretty decent sized file. But, you know, 
you're dragging and dropping, you're cutting and pasting, and then once it's in there, especially the comps, once it's in the comps manager, you've got that stuff forever. And the other the other one that I, I'm really enamored with is that BOV. I think that the broker's opinion of value module is probably the best thing you guys have ever done yet. I know you got some other stuff up your sleeve, yeah. but here here's that proposal. Yeah, yeah. Here here's the actual proposal itself. And again, look how slick that. I hope you can see the graphics on this thing with the building, my logos inserted over here, the price, all my bullet points, and I love this. There's your there's the picture of the building, interior pictures. Now, I put those pictures in. It took me a grand total of about five minutes, and they were on my iPhone when I brought them back. The maps and aerials populate themselves. Once you put the address in, bing, 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 you're done. It's right there. I mean, even this aerial was done just simply by that geocoding. Here's the financials, the cash flow analysis, the investment details. Literally, it pulls it right off of those first two pages. That's why I say if, if you're not using this in your day-to-day -day practice, you know, you're, you're missing a huge opportunity. I love the, the IRR page, especially in my market, because stuff is trading at like four, five, and six caps. And a lot of people want to know what's the advantage to buying. Well, you're not buying it for the last day of the first year. You know, you're buying it as an investment property. Sales comps. These comps came right out of the market. These are right around the building, and I got to use them on another building. Once they're in the manager, all you've got to do is literally drag and drop. But this is the one I really, really, really love. I love the section on the broker's opinion of value. Let me see if I can blow this thing up a little bit. Kind of scroll down here. Once you've put your sales comps and your rent comps in here, and your income, it does all of this for you. So literally, if you're sitting there going, okay, I wanna see you know, what it's worth or how does it comport with what my thinking is about this property? It's right there. It puts it all right in for you. Ooh, there we go. Popped up on a full screen. Let me get back out here a little bit. And then, like I said, one of the biggest, uh, one of the biggest questions I've heard you know, throughout my career is okay. Well, you know, what's uh, you know, what are you guys going to do that's different? How are you gonna How are you gonna work for me? And again, I put that right in here. Right there's the marketing plan. It's already in there. It's in there as a template. And originally, all I had to do is drag and drop. My uh, my bio again with my uh, my high school graduation picture, of course. <laughs> and <laughs> gotta keep it current. Yeah. <laughs> well, yeah. You know. I, and I, I notice there's a typo there. I have to change the size of my E. And it's senior investment associate. But that's that's really how how quick and easy it is to put one of those uh, proposals together. And I think that um, you know the efficacy, the ability to to really put that stuff in there and have it there. So here's a here's a question. I, I think that uh, it, one is from Chanel. Uh, what is the possibility of prospecting for Market Edge? So I would say, you, you, and Matt, you can chime in as well. Prospecting, you know, you're going to develop your list and your target market in CRM and use that to sort of do your targeting. But what one of the things that you do, Adam, and maybe we can share is like doing that BOV as part of your prospecting. So you, oh, you're, yeah. you're, you're sort of you're managing the process in CRM, but you're using Market Edge to use to give out a little bit of bait to and tempt the prospect to say look here's what here's a demonstration of my expertise and by the way oh, if i press a button all of a sudden i've got an om and I, i've got a due diligence due, due diligence library in a deal room and yep. i've got a group in crm that is they bought this last deal for me that looks just like yours i press a button and all of a sudden i can hit those 50 or whatever number of prospects in a second and get them into my Absolutely. deal room. Oh yeah, absolutely. And and the other thing, the other thing is, as you're working through this, right? You're working through the process. It was funny because you, you and I were talking earlier about me being a big uh, proponent of making calls. Well, I, I make calls, but I make them on. I follow up on what I call the secret weapon letter. They're not cold calls anymore. They're warm calls. But we were we were literally doing it the other day, and I sat here with one of my junior agents, 
and we made like 30 calls and he's like he's like well i didn't find a single solitary seller and i said well did you find anything else he goes yeah i found six buyers i'm like hold it run that by me again you didn't find a solitary seller but you found six people that are ready willing and able to buy in that market today yeah <laughs> dude print that proposal out and go visit each and every one of them now show them the value proposition well there's um you you love this and since you you do adam the questions are coming in and i can't believe that and that's so it, why this meeting is so important that people were not aware of the opinion of value section in market edge are you kidding it's me so powerful and i'm so glad that you shared it and people have seen it if you could you, you you've done it so well for so many maybe uh, just expand upon it a, a bit and oh, you want to get you want the secret sauce day i want the secret sauce man uh well i'll tell you what how about if i pick one out of my secret sauce file here here's um here's a self a storage facility slash um it's a it's about eighty thousand square foot warehouse it's got three tenants in it and i put this whole thing together and and guys this is just how hard it is click you know capital reserves down payment how much is the you know how much is the thing worth now again here's how i here's how i operate i want to config I want, I've been spending too much time at these marijuana dispensaries. <laughs> I want to compare and contrast, for example, what I know about square foot prices, cap rates, and what's been going on in the market. And and Market Edge is kind of like a slam dunk because what I'll start off with is I'll go, okay, I've got, for example, I'm putting in a new property. I'm sorry about that. I went one page back. I'm going to put in a new property. Okay. I know that it's a, a 80,000 square foot building and that's going to go for a hundred dollars to $120 a square foot. So I'm going to force a number here. I'm just going to put a number in to get things working. Then I'll come over here and I'll do the financials and guys, this takes seconds in my market. You can get a 25, you know, 25% uh, down payment. Interest is 4%. They're doing 25 and 30 year AMS. Boom, boom, boom. Click calculate done. In this case, I went in and I put the income in the speed analysis because well, I didn't have the actual here, because there's a, There were questions about, they, they, someone was asking about, uh, Rebecca was asking about this working for single tenant, but oh, absolutely. you see the ability to put in any number of tenants. On that first page, you could oh, have yeah. 10 tenants or 20 tenants, however many tenants, well, then you could put Jeff, suite by suite. I did 308 panel. unit apartment building in Indianapolis, Indiana. And I just got done doing a single tenant triple net lease sale lease back. Literally yesterday. So yeah. I mean the 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 the, the tenant count, the one in the one I did in Indiana was 308 units and it had five different floor plans. And it it, it works just I mean, just the same. But in this case, like I said, I just threw in twelve dollars a square foot. Put in no expenses because it's a triple net market, right? Dragged and dropped everything. It's already in my, it's already in my, uh, you know, my proposal, my template, template set up over here. I think it's called something tricky like industrial. Set it up once, clicked it and saved it. And then all I got to do is load it, right? Because I, I like to dial them in. And every now and again, you got to, you've got to move it around a little bit. Let me do this real quick. And let me show you what this thing looks like on the BOV. But again, remember where this is coming from is I'm taking the market rents, the rents that were told to me by the landlord, and putting that all in the comps manager, putting that in my survey. And, and by the way, for everybody to know, we'll, we'll jump in there in a second as soon as this renders. But you can host all of your comps in CRM. Uh, yep. You manage it there. So you manage all of them. And then you can import them straight into market edge and uh, you've got the access and the ability to put it into presentations like like adam is working with well you know jeff that's that's really the the kicker with that that comps manager because you can this this is the full screen mode right there we go um you put them in once and they're there so like those apartments i showed you i was working apartments with one of my junior agents in the hollywood area 
So literally, we only had to gather like maybe a dozen total comps for six different proposals because they're all in the same yeah. market area. Reuse them. They're all the same comp. You get to reuse them. And then, like I said earlier, that 19 unit that I showed you went back in as a comp for the rest of them. But this is this is the actual presentation. Now I'm going to be. I've already delivered this one, and I'm out for signature on this. This is a ten million dollar deal in Hollywood, Florida. There's your financials. I know it's a little bit hard to see, but gross income, and this is a triple net deal. Now, cap rate, cash on cash return, all that's calculated for you. It's all right there. I'm going to be trading this. Look at this. This is where I'm going to be landing right here. There's your IRR. Yep. You want you want to know why you should buy this? How about a 14% after tax return? How's that come about? A combination of increasing rents and tax savings. And here are my comps. Right there. Right in there. And then again, rent comps. Put them in. How do we compare and contrast over here? What's our price per square foot or rent per square foot look like? You can see we've still got a little bit of room to grow here. Our competition's a little bit higher in some cases. And our by the way, comps. you make adjustments in the comps manager to indicate if this is superior or inferior. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Uh, and the, the system automatically makes an adjustment for its cal right. calculations. I came in on this deal at $10 million. There's the conservative income valuation. Based on the sales, sales came in at 11 at the high end. So I, I basically said to the seller here, it's not Adam's opinion of value. It's the market's opinion. This is what the market is actually doing today. This is what the market reality is. And it's funny because, you know, I learned a couple years ago, you know, more than a couple years ago, but when you start blaming it on that big, bad, amorphous market, the sellers don't get mad at you anymore if they don't like the price. Well, you're backing it's it up with facts, to... and you're demonstrating. Yeah. It's not just talk. You're, you're documenting it with yep. real numbers, real comps, real information. Yep. And real Absolutely. Value. And, and hey, here's yeah. what I want you guys, oh, you know, and, and our, our listeners to think about. You walk in with this document and, and sit down and, and really chop it up with the prospective seller. And you got some Yahoo coming in behind you with that, you know, three-page report from the MLS. Who do you think's going to win the assignment? You're actually doing some work in demonstrating value ahead of time. Absolutely. Now, this is a long marketing plan that I put together, and this is another one that I love. You guys allow us to put in J, um, PDFs. So for a, a bigger investment or a, a more sophisticated seller, I have a written marketing plan that I created and literally saved as a PDF. This coloration you see in the background is actually my company logo. And here's the efficacy or, or what I want you to take away from this. I walk in, I sit down with the seller and I say, okay, seller, Biggest, biggest complaint I've heard in the last 38 years from owners is they hired an agent and then they never heard from them again. They have no idea what the, the broker did on their behalf. I'll say, well, let me show you what we're going to do for you. And here it is. And I put it right there in writing. And, and by the way, add to that. Now, in CORE, you can generate incredible marketing activity reports weekly, oh, easily, yeah. or monthly, whatever you have to do. So you actually, you, here's the promise that you made and here's the delivery and here's how I give it back. Here's all, here's what I did, all the calls I made, all the emails, all the tours, and here's the, right. the list of leads and prospects. Well, and the, one of the things before you jump to the question about the um, not being an appraiser and appraisal regulations. Now, the, the BOV, if you saw on Adam's page, there was a disclaimer at the bottom of the page. Mm -hmm. And there's also a narrative component where you can put whatever caveats you need about this is market information and it's not an appraisal and that it's a uh, state by state has its own uh, exactly. wording that needs to be put in. So you can manage manage through that in the system, buddy. So I just wanted to let you. In, in Florida, I am allowed under Florida law to sell brokers opinions of value and actually collect fees. 
as long as I am in a non-federally related transaction and I do not hold it out as an appraisal. So I say, listen, it's a broker's opinion of value. I use the same methodology as an appraiser does. Here's what it's worth in my opinion. Now, hey, Jeff, real quickly, I wanted to show you, we talked about this earlier and I, I forget who had the question, but remember those comps we talked about? Yep, there they are. And check it out, you know, there's their phone number and there's the name. So as I'm working through this whole process, I'm backfilling all of the comps and all of their information. And the cool part of this is, and, and I know we might be getting a little a little out there uh, time-wise, but I've got it set up here with groups so that, for example, I can click on a link and pick up a pay, oops, didn't do that right, buyers of sale leasebacks or whatever, small buyers, small bay buyers, people who want to buy in, so in a particular region, I don't know, it's not working today. You have, you're in properties, you have to jump over to contacts ah, to get those. That's right. Well, thank God somebody's pointing that out. There we go. Oops. There you, you go. Group there in properties too, but those are groups yep. of, yeah. So like, for example, here's here's my top, I, I, why am I showing this? <laughs> really? Here's, gotta, my, here's like the top, the top five buyers in my market area, All right? Same thing. Same for this top top sale leaseback buyers in the market area. Uh, Shannon was asking about the, the the expenses for landlords when you're showing the expense analysis. Mm -hmm. How do you, we, we you focus on the revenue side and you could show you showed that you could put it line item tenant by tenant, but uh, yep. on the landlord side, if you're doing the analysis for them, you're also going to want to show how the expenses break down. Oh yeah, absolutely. Let me see if I can grab one real quick that, that I've got some expenses in. Uh, let's try, let's try Meridian Street. This is an apartment complex up in uh, beautiful sunny Tallahassee. Hit the expense key. Let's see what we got. Yep, there they are. So in this case, this, uh, I want to say this is a 32 unit uh, apartment building. I'm just going by memory now. Um, I put in a reserve amount of $3,200 per year. And then I took the actual expenses right from the um, seller's sheet that they provided me, $1,200 in advertising, building insurance, $8,100. I put all those individual items in there, property insurance, real estate taxes, the whole nine yards. In this case, because they're a, um, apartment complex they are not reimbursable they're all part of the rent so it calculates it here it's not reimbursable i click off on reimbursable expenses and i've got my expense load and then if you come over like for example the charts are really cool but you can come into the charts and you can look at let's see uh operating expense analysis or operating income analysis what's going on with the income and expenses Gross income versus expenses. There's your income, and there are your expenses. And you can gross those up. Uh, usually I do about a 2% year uh, on those, and I do 3% on the leases in this case. So you've got all these really cool tools built right into it. And, and I know I, I know we're running out of time here, but I mean, there's just, and that's why I said to you, this is my favorite, the cumulative wealth analysis. When you show an investor that, um, yeah, here's what you're going to end up having, you know, in your property value. Uh, it gets their attention real quick. Absolutely. I, I like I like putting that stuff in, but you know, I can't I can't tell you, you know, and stress enough the the reasons that I use it. Um, it's it's quick, it's efficient. It doesn't cost five thousand dollars a proposal to do it. You know, you don't have to wait for somebody in California to finish it for you. You can do it yourself, or I used to have my uh, my daughter Carmen doing them for me, and she got uh, you know, she got pretty good at it. Uh, you can do. I mean, it's just it's just so it's so robust in some instances that you'll probably never touch everything in it, and yet you'll have, generally speaking, everything you need to do an effective listing presentation. Put together your OM. I mean, that's just click off a couple of the buttons on the 
you know, on the presentation. Yeah. And your flyer. And the other yeah. thing is, I, I mean, I sent uh, I sent the dispensary out the other day uh, through Market Edge. Done. And I think all I did was click one or two buttons. You know, it was it was just. Oh, you, you, you know, can publish uh, this in the marketplace oh, yeah. and then send the email flyer out and then drive traffic to your deal room and. Well, I, well, we don't have time for the deal room, but man, I love the deal room. Yeah. I use that thing. We got to save everything. that for another day. Hey, there's one yeah. more question about capital expenses in the. Um, the expense so you, you set up a reserve yep. and then you can yep. you can also forecast a, a special oh yeah so you can actually put in capital expenses too yeah you can put them in the expense uh, in the expense uh feed. so the system comes so, yeah, preloaded with all normal expenses then you can put in any unique expenses modify the yep. expenses that the system is preloaded with and then uh, yeah, you can change all of those i mean you can go into the expense page and change all the labels yeah, where, where am I? At? Oh, there we go. Expenses. Put my glasses back on here. Who knows what I'm doing? Let's try this again. So you can go in. I think there's what is it? It's not leaving your main tab there. Yeah, what's up with that? Oh, I hope the internet didn't go down again. That would no, oh, what well, can't be? We're talking on it. Well, suffice it to say, you're, you're frozen there somehow. I don't know what's going on in your, your yeah, system. But, it wouldn't surprise me. But, but, but Shannon, the, put... there is an expense under the expense tab. You come, we come preloaded with a number of of normal operating expenses. Then yep. you can program and and schedule any uh, both capital reserves as well as then a capital expense as it comes about. Yeah, absolutely. And and you can change. You know, the other thing is you can change. Like, and I, this is one of the the one of the ones that I had initially a little bit of um, concern about was in my area rent was and is paid for example let me see if i can get it pay, paid by you know square foot per year well i was doing a deal in california and it's paid by square foot per month there and the increases were based on dollars not percentages you can do all of that in the income page you can dial all of that in so i mean you know i, I spent I, I almost I'm almost ashamed to say this, but back in the day I spent four thousand nine hundred and ninety five dollars to buy a, a copy of Argus for myself. It took a two week class to learn how to use it, and that only got you to the point where you knew enough to learn how to call customer support to figure out how to make it work. I don't own Argus anymore. No. I don't need it. And we, we, we've I'm done doing. the uh, we've done the analysis, and you know, for yep. what the market needs, we, we'll get the same answer uh, within pennies for oh yeah, the absolutely. Of the cost. So, well, the other the other thing is, Jeff, that you got to understand when you're dealing, for example, I almost do exclusively private party deals. When you're dealing with the private party market and not asset managers, all of that other stuff is like trying to you know, knock a fly down with a cannon. Yeah, it totally makes overkill. Sense. Completely overkill. But I'll tell you, the charts and the graphs, when somebody like a buyer sees what their cumulative wealth is going to look like, or you can demonstrate why they shouldn't focus on the cap rate, they should look at the internal rate of return. Or you go in and you show a seller how much their property is worth in the context of today's market. Not Adam's opinion. Not Matt's opinion, not Jeff's opinion, what the market reality is. I, I got to tell you something. You can you can almost watch the change. You know, I, I've done this before. I said, listen, I'd love to sell your building for $9 million. I make more money. The challenge is the market will only bear $7.5 million. You know, you don't blame me. Blame that big, bad, amorphous yeah. market. Well, but we, yeah, we went over just, a bit, but it's a lot, a lot to cover. And... Uh everyone cool. stuck around so i appreciate it matt you have anything before we wrap up you've been quiet I'm no you guys are doing an amazing job and i'm just taking notes and trying to respond to questions awesome yeah, listen i know we i know we ran over and i told you when we started this thing that you know i could spend an hour on probably one facet of this thing you know and and i i did a whole day with the ccim chapter showing them how to do the proposals if you've got real next and you're not using that proposal 
you're missing a huge opportunity. And the other one I'll say, I, I, I want a major, major leasing assignment by using the side-by-side -side lease comparison. And I know that's not what we're you know about today, but if you haven't seen it and you haven't used it, that lease analysis is just killer. It's absolutely phenomenal. Awesome. Well, thanks so much, Adam. Thank you, Matt. Thanks, everybody, for joining us. Look forward to Bo Barron joining us next month, and he'll be talking, focusing more on building your listing farm, building a database of properties and how to solicit, cultivate, prospect, and and turn the, that data into an asset uh, to win business. So excited to get this off the ground. And if you have some feedback of how we can improve and enhance and some topics you might want to have covered, send me a note and we'll make that happen. We will be building a, uh, a Facebook community as well. We'd like to get you all into so this can be running real time in between sessions. And you'll just be able to post questions to the group or comments to the group, and we'll we'll try to share some tips and uh, ideas along the way to to again foster some uh, more community collaboration and best practice sharing. So thanks again. Hope you all have a great day. Happy Valentine's Day, and we will talk to you soon. Bye bye. See. You.